Got something extra special today. A new old stock Heathkit clock radio. Unfortunately not a digital clock radio. The box has been cut open, but it seems like the contents have never been fully unpacked before. So I'm going to do that for you guys. We'll both be seeing everything in here for the first time. So right on the top here is the Heathkit assembly manual for this Heathkit AM clock radio model GR38. The manual's uh, seen better days, but it's still all there. And since it's never been worked on, nothing is checked off. Usually it's hard to find uh, Heathkit manuals with no check marks or notes or anything like that. I'm not going to go through this giant manual in this video. It would just make this unboxing too long. Here's a fold out of the uh, circuit board. Beneath that, and then order form for replacement parts. You can see there is a date of 1971. This is a generic manual. It would have been included in a number of different kits. This is two or so years before Heathkit released their first digital clock kit. Here's some padding. The metal chassis, which seems to be galvanized rather than cadmium plated, thankfully. Another uh, metal piece there. I think this is for the clock movement, if I had to guess. Some more padding. The cord. It's a pretty sturdy looking cord. It's probably because this clock has a uh, timer feature, I believe. So you can plug in an appliance. Got an unopened box here. I'm debating if I want to uh, cut these open or not. We'll see how the rest of the things look in here. This little spacer. Another small box. This one isn't sealed, so let's take a look. There's the speaker. Looks like a decent size and Really well constructed one. Nice solid magnet there. Some more wrapping paper. Here's the front plastic piece, thankfully unbroken. circuit board. Never been soldered. Not as shiny as it used to be. You probably want to carefully rough up those pads a little bit so your solder will actually stick to it. Oops. Some more padding. Got a bunch of miscellaneous parts in here. Some braces. This is the uh, trimmer tool, I believe. Spool of Kester solder. Made expressly for Heathkit. 
I do end up building this, I will definitely use my own solder. Some more brackets. I'm amazed this rubber band hasn't perished. A lot of times these rubber bands perish in just a couple of years. And it's been like 50 years since this thing was made. Or nearly. Ah, the antenna. Here's the uh, core adjustment tool. I don't know what this is for. Here's a heavy uh, package. Quite a mess of loose components. This is still sealed, and it feels like just uh, screws and such. Ah, here's the dial string. More screws. And more screws. Yep. There's a neon lamp. Not sure why the outside looks cloudy like that. Would have been nice if they'd packed the transistors in some kind of static bag. But here they are. Tiny little things. I think that's all of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven transistors. And uh, got a couple rectifier diodes here. I imagine there'll be a germanium diode somewhere, but I don't see one here amongst the parts. I'll definitely use my own uh, fresh capacitors if I end up building this thing. You don't really want to use capacitors this old. These Mylar capacitors are probably fine as are these dipped ceramic capacitors. Ah, there's the germanium diode. It's got its own package for some reason. In the interest of all this stuff not getting lost, I'm going to put it back in the bag real quick. Uh, and here's the appliance outlet for this thing. I believe this kit is fairly rare. I can't say I've seen too many of them. But then again, I wasn't really looking for this sort of thing either. I've been mainly collecting digital clocks, not analog ones. But thankfully this is at least a transistor radio, so it does fit with the, uh, well, all the other stuff I've collected over the years. So here's another box. This one's not sealed. So let's see what's in there. Ah, it's the uh, tuning capacitor. Still turns nice and smooth. It is cadmium plated, but the cadmium plating has not degraded. Probably because it's been in its own little box here. Something else wrapped in this kind of shredded uh, 
paper material. It's quite soft. It's the power transformer. Hmm. You see one of the legs is kind of uh, clamped under there. I'll just have to consult the manual later to see if that's uh, intentional. I'm guessing it is. It is odd though. Ah, bet this goes here. Hold the circuit board in place. Not too much left in the box now. A little envelope stuffed in there. Probably decals. I'll leave that alone. Here's the bottom plate of the chassis. Here's the cabinet. Let's take a look at that. Ah, beautiful. I didn't know what color it would be. You can see it's a nice salmon color. It's a pretty uncommon color. Even as far as 1970s stuff goes, actually. It wasn't one of the main colors of the 70s. Like orange and yellow and avocado green. This is a little uh, smashed, unfortunately. I think this is... Yeah, this looks like a... Basically a sticker to adhere this in place. Or something like that. It's already chewed up, so let's just take a look. Yeah, it's like double stick material. Oh well. I'll have to straighten that out somehow. There's another small envelope. Maybe more decals. Uh, the glue's kind of broken on that anyway. Let's see what it is. Hmm. Not quite sure what that's for. Maybe something related to the clock mechanism? I don't know. And that's it. Box is empty. However, there's one thing I did not see, which means it must be in here, the uh, clock movement. Part of me doesn't want to cut this open, but the other part of me says do it anyway, because I want to see it. Several things in there, actually. So here's that clock movement that I was uh, wondering where it was. Seems like the uh, motor is a little sticky. I'll have to clean that off. So here's the mechanism. You can see it's a Telecron timer movement. So it's probably still okay. They made things quite well. You can see this kind of silver capsule here. That contains the rotor for the synchronous motor as well as some of the gears. It's a little annoying that it's the permanently sealed type because that means you can't add oil. So hopefully the oil in there is still okay. I guess it depends on what oil they use. I mean you could probably drill a hole in here somewhere and inject oil, but I hope it doesn't come to that. We shall see. If I end up building this thing, again, I'm kind of undecided. Okay. So here we've got the IF cans. These are huge old tube style ones. I'm not sure why they use these. These would have been uh, pretty outdated by the time this was made, 1971. Here's the little tiny hands for the clock. 
And one last thing. Ah, the knobs. These are actually pretty nice ones. We've got a nice chrome ring as well as a little bright there. And here's the matching, I assume, snooze button in that nice salmon color. Yeah, and one more thing. Dial pointer and the knobs for the clock movement. If I do end up building this thing, I'll do a part two showing it built. Maybe some parts of the assembly. Haven't really had much luck with uh, assembling stuff on camera. This just seems to be when everything goes wrong, so probably not going to do that. I will at least include some photos from the construction process. Well, thanks for watching.